Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Spot of Science. I'm Gus. I'm Chris. And I'm Sally. And this episode of A Spot of Science is brought to you by Movement Watches. I absolutely love the watch they sent me. It's sleek, stylish, and I always get tons of compliments when I wear it out. Movement was started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them, so they started their own watch company. Watches start at just $95. You know, at a department store, you're looking at $400 to $500. Bucks. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. You get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash bite size. That's mvmtwatches.com slash bite size. Join the movement. It's like blingy. It's Chris, shiny. Chris, where's your watch? You uh, failed us, Chris. I forgot <laughs> to wear mine. <laughs> All right. So we got a couple of uh, viewer submitted questions here. So, Chris, as always, you're going to take first pass. Yep. Do all living things perceive time at the same speed? Like how the flash thinks so fast it appears that time has slowed down. Submitted by Alex. No. Okay, so living things do not perceive no, time at the same speed. No, not exactly. Okay. Um, because I don't, th it has to do with a couple things. One, I think how intelligent the thing is. Okay, okay. Because it's time and how long they live. How long they so live? So okay. something is really, really dumb and doesn't live for a long time. Like a house fly. Exactly. Time will seem longer and slower. So you're saying like, okay, okay. So, I, I, so, I see what so, you're saying. So, so when you say time feels slower, do you mean that they see things in slow motion or sped up? They see things, mm, they see. So, okay. They see things slower as in like things happen like, when things happen, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, here, I've got an example maybe to help okay, out. Okay, yeah. And so a dog, mm -hmm. people always talk about dog years. Let's say like a dog lives 10 years. So how does time pass for a dog? Well, I think a dog is probably, time seems to be going fast, slower. Fast, slower? Fast, slower. <laughs> um, slower. Because they they live for a shorter period of time. I think a dog is, is a more, not as extreme of an example. I right. think flies. Start with flies. Easier because it's also... I think so. Flies. So if you if a fly sees someone trying to swat it, does it go straight from up here to down there in a very short period of time, or does it like woo? Like the fly. Um, oh, okay. Really slow motion. Well, I think it will move out of the. It'll happen at the same moment, but then in the fly's mind, in the fly's <laughs> no. So is that faster? It's faster. Or slower? It's slower. It happens slower. It happens slower. Happens slower. Yes. So and, it's seeing things that would, we would perceive as slow motion. Yes, a little in a weird way. And in, in, in so its, it's head, so it's perceiving time slower. Okay. And in its head, from all that, like that moment will be a big deal for that fly. Like the same way, like we talk about, like Hurricane Katrina. I like, always talk about <laughs> Hurricane oh Katrina <laughs> because, like, <laughs> it was a big it's like, thing. dude. <laughs> Do you remember that, that time it, when that newspaper came down? <laughs> yeah, dude. It was like Hurricane Katrina, man. <laughs> it's like it was a big momentous event for that fly, like in his life. Yeah. It was this big thing, this big event. But to, everyone, every fly knows someone affected by the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like this big thing that it will never forget. The newspaper for president the uh, the fly president comes in and says, Oh, I'll make things right again after the newspaper incident. Exactly. Of, uh, 3 30 PM. I had another thought too, also. Um if even humans can perceive time differently, okay, as in if someone is inebriated on alcohol or marijuana or uh, some other drug, you just say drugs, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, it it can affect the way you perceive time, even right? Okay, like so, time can slow down or speed up. So you're saying that uh, all living things have a different perception yeah. of time. What do you think, Sally? Yes. <laughs> You're right, kind of. They do have a different perception of time. And this has you, been. You, we need to get a shirt for Chris that says, I'm right. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been scientifically studied. Um, we look at it by testing the uh, critical flicker fusion frequency. So it's. You know. I you know how when you describe the resolution of a microscope, because what I was about to say, but maybe you don't know how you describe the resolution. <laughs> well, of I know, but Gus might. Know. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't, I don't for, know. for Gus, obviously. Okay, yeah. um, so it's kind of how close two points can be together before they blur into one spot. And so the better the resolution, the closer the points can be, um, and you see them as two distinct points. Well, the way that we test how animals perceive time is that we flash 
lights at them. And how close can those flashes be together before they perceive it as a continuous beam of light? So if you're constantly flashing like one second and then it's off and then a second later and it comes on and then a second, we will perceive that as separate flashes. Whereas if you flash a thousand tiny little pulses of light per second, we will see that as a continuous light. We will not see it flashing. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness, because that's how most of our lights work. And so humans have roughly a 60 hertz, 60 per second frequency for this. This is why in all the gaming stuff, people choose 60 frames per second because it looks most natural. And it's why in filming we go for 30 because it gives more of a filmic look and everything's a bit more blurred. Um, and so they've done this with different animals. You can kind of plug into their brain and see what's going on and see the difference between, because if something's flashing on, that will have a different response in the brain to if it's off. Mm -hmm. And so you can test this. And flies can actually see 250 flashes a second. Wow. So we are 60. So they are a good four times. So they perceive time four times slower than us. Which is, um, so they will see things in slow motion. They literally have more information going into their brain. And so we assume that kind of they process, so if we talk about it like a video analogy, we've got a certain number of frames per second. We have 60 frames per second, they have 250. But then if you play it back at the same frame rate, it looks like slow motion, that's how yeah, slow yeah. motion works. And so flies do see, see things in slow motion. And that's why it's so bloody difficult to swat a fly. They're because they're you've got to do it four times as fast to be as what you think is really quick. They're like, dude, why is this newspaper getting bigger towards me? Oh, is that what's going on? Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's the hurricane. Oh, I suppose I better move to one side now. Um, and dogs, interestingly, um, have 80 hertz as their frequency. So it's slightly more than, but it's nowhere near seven times, which is the dog year, human mm. year conversion. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, and so they do perceive time differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's, it, it tends to be those smaller animals rather than the intelligence of the animal. Smaller oh. animals uh, tend to have higher, um, they can determine faster flickers. So they see perceive time slower. So bigger animals see uh, perceive times faster. So could you, is there some sort, is it, would it be possible for humans to have some sort of add-on, like uh, um, like think of a mech suit or something that somehow made us able to process light faster, so then it gave us faster reflexes. So this is the interesting thing, is that vision isn't just in the eyes, it's mostly in the brain. Mm. And we already throw out an awful lot of our visual information because we don't have the brain power to process it all. And so we are good enough as it is processing 60 frames a second. It's possible that for short periods, maybe it would be useful to be able to augment that. But just in terms of like the amount of information going into your brain, your brain would poof, overheat so and die. Like if, it wouldn't, but essentially. Going to following up with the drug thing. Yeah. So how does that affect people's sense of time? I genuinely don't know. Ooh, it's it's a research project for you, Chris. Well, you can measure people's <laughs> ability to tell time with the lights, give them a bunch of drugs, and then remeasure the then time. Could, could, because so that's manipulating the way the brain functions. So, so there's so also a different sense of perception of time, as in a, if you ask someone to uh, to say when one minute is over, how long does that take? So then there's a the famous Einstein quote is a minute with your hand on a hot stove versus a minute next to a pretty girl feel like two different things, mm -hmm. it's relative. Mm. And so our perception of time in that sense is something that we can't test in other animals. Um, but to say, okay, it's like when you're nervous, everything feels like it's going faster. So like you're on, you pause, like you forget what to say in the middle of an important presentation. You're actually probably only pausing for about five seconds, but to you it feels like five minutes. Mm -hmm. That is probably what would change on drugs. I don't know if it would affect the amount of information going into your eyes and certainly how you process that. It might do. I, I genuinely don't know. Um, but it would almost certainly affect how we... Think. So it, like, if you think, oh, I was on this big trip that I don't know how drugs work. If I was on this big trip that lasted for like an hour, then maybe it was five minutes. Maybe that's a kind of Inception style thing. Like when you're dreaming, everything becomes squished. You should still research this, Chris. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sure we can find some funding. So, um, one of the, so there's another question here. Is the passing of time a human construct or are animals aware of the days passing and the seasons? And that was submitted by Gunner. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, yes, but only in as much that it affects their life. Okay. So, for example, they're um, like there's a sale at Kohl's. Yeah, well, in a in a weird way, yeah, because like in what way are humans so, aware of time that doesn't affect them? Well, I'm thinking more about like animals and stuff. Like animals might be like, well, this is that time where the 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 you know the good fruits out, <laughs> you know, and they think about it in terms of like how this this apple, we'll say it's an apple, is only available at this time. So they only think about time in as much as like when's the next meal and when's so the next would they food. be aware of the apple becoming better in the future and then when the apple's there would they become aware of it going away eventually or if if they experience it over several it depends on how long they're gonna be alive okay you know if a dog lives for eight years they're gonna remember the apples (laughs) um but it (laughs) i think i i think that nailed it (laughs) kind of (laughs) um (laughs) what does it mean to know before i go into the answer what oh i had another thought too Okay. And that, about goldfish, like goldfish, their memory is so short. That's not true. Well, goldfish actually have pretty good memory. Okay. Well, you know, some other animals that maybe aren't goldfish, <laughs> they they don't they don't have the ability to remember things long term, and so to them, time um, it's harder to keep track of. Okay. They're looking. They're more like what's right in front of me. What's right in front of me? More like memento type thing where it's like- They're like in the they moment. Only, the mo- they can only remember five minutes at a time. So every, every five minutes they're like, wait, where's the food? There's the food. And then five minutes go by and they're like, what was I doing? Oh yeah. It's like finding Dory. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, the, the thing about um, knowing how things pertain to them, there's a h- whole study of it called phenology, which is kind of how animals know the seasons. And they very much do because all the trees come into bloom pretty much at the same time of year. All the birds have to know when all the caterpillars are out in order to come in. And again, this is a huge topic of study. Oxford in particular, because we have this big woodland, we look at how climate change is affecting how birds know what season it is. Because mm. one of the ways that they determine, many animals determine the seasons, is it by day length? Is it by temperature? Is it by what other food sources are around? Um, so there's, if it's done by day length, that's not going to change. If it's done by temperature, that's going to change with climate change. And so if you've got, say, the trees relying on temperature and the birds relying on day length, they'll become out of sync. And so this is a real big problem with climate change is that all the birds might end up coming, um, coming out from or migrating in or uh, small mammals might come out of hibernation too early or too late so their food has been and gone. There's other animals, though, that it's even more of a matter of life and death. So cicadas, which are those huge bugs that make mm-hmm. that kind of chirruping noise in the background of mm-hmm. every movie you've ever seen that's not based in the UK. Uh, I swear, cicadas are everywhere. Um, they, you have prime number cicadas, and they will, they have these huge, emerg- so they most of the time as a kind of little maggot grub lava thing in the soil, in trees, and they spend all their time eating, and then, boom, every cicada in the area of this one species emerges as an adult in exactly the same year. And the point of that is just to overwhelm the predators. Because if you've got, say, 10 cicadas and 10 birds that eat cicadas, then everyone will get eaten. Whereas if you've got 100 cicadas and 10 birds, then some will survive. But what they do is they've synced their cycles so that they come out every seven years or every 13 years or every 17 years. Because then if you're a predator, you're less likely to work out what that cycle is because there there are fewer factors that match. So if they came out on a four-year cycle and the predators were on a two-year cycle, every other cycle they'd sync up. And so that wouldn't be good. But if you're on a prime year, you have to perfectly match. You, you, there's not just going to be a yeah. random overlap. And so, yeah, there are different species of this one type of cicada. Each one has a different... It knows, okay, guys, seven years is up. Let's just hit this place. <laughs> and, and they know that. And we, we don't really know how they know that. The prime number aspect just kind of blew my mind a little it's bit. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I have a question. So is that... A, Good shape for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a genetic evolutionary thing that they've, that, that's ingrained in them yes. versus a learned behavior. Like so this of, is of why time. I asked you the question, what does it mean to know? Because a lot of these animals... So for example, do plants 
know when winter is coming um, and then they shed all their leaves in the autumn or fall. Um, well, probably not because they don't need that level of cognition. It's an innate response to the changing temperature in daylight. And so, yeah, so what does it mean to know in an animal sense? When I say that an animal knows something, I don't necessarily mean it's consciously thinking, oh, it's getting a bit nippy out, so I'd better go and uh, change the colour of my leaves. Could you trick a tree? Yes, it's called a greenhouse. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. He's just shot down before you even went any further. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you guys next time on A Spot of Science. As always, if you have any questions you'd like us to tackle, send us an email at sciencespot at roosterteeth.com.